Hello everyone and welcome back to the Random Pets Genetics Challenge here in the laboratory where we are currently putting aside our canine petri dishes and uh, diving into the feline side of things in an attempt to really gain some ground on having our cats start catching up to the number of dog experiments we have done. Our dog experiments right now, after all, have reached a peak level of perfection with our red-eyed horse-tailed, or cow-tailed, excuse me, hippogriff, hoofed, and pawed, beautiful Anaosawa. And I just, I don't, I don't think we could possibly go any further with the amazingness of our random genes from here. And everything is just kind of going to be downhill as we watch as normal dogs become part of our life here, which is wonderful, but, but I just... I, I hesitate to add new canines, so this week has been all about the cats, and they have not disappointed. Last time, we created PB Kitty, who is missing a leg, has fangs, no fur, has like these special markings that no that means who knows what, and red eyes. So PB Kitty has been a really interesting addition and was the mate of Moon. And we also have some other really cool cats like Kick Punch, who is actually the side, um, let's see, what do you, what do you call it? The side? kick yeah the sidekick of sarah who we have decided is actually someone who wants to go on to become a super villain she is a athletic bro who is evil and cheerful so she wants to go be a super villain in her own right and like all good super villains in training she needed to get some of her internship done at a mad scientist lab and apparently for some odd reason my my laboratory counts as a mad scientist lab can you believe that nonsense but it is pretty cool to actually have her here here, and actually creating a mad scientist lab would be something that's really fun <laughs> in the future and I have been thinking about making uh, Alia Green from our Green family legacy if you guys are familiar with that do the not so berry challenge with an alien twist and I'm beginning to think it'd be really fun to kind of tie in some labs centered around superheroes and super villains in the future too with that twist so maybe if you go to work at the like super villain lab you're expected to be very mischievous you're expected to steal stuff you're expected to freeze people I think that'd be kind of cool and then if you want to become a criminal maybe you go and you like do some extra jobs there so I think that'd be really fun but enough of that rambling about future adventures we must now make a little bit of room here in the lab so moon you are hereby wonderfully retired my beautiful beautiful cat you can go ahead and head out we are going to be keeping kick punch because kick punch is the very important sidekick of Sarah if you ask me and then oh and I need to make sure did I save everything I hope I did. I don't think I did. Moon! Moon, I hope you're still with us just for this. All right, there we go. I don't think I saved it. And I really want to be able to keep Puppy because Puppy is beautiful. And I would love to have more kittens with Puppy in the future. Uh, that sounds really weird to say out loud. More kittens with Puppy. But yeah, more kittens with Puppy the cat in the future. Because look at the results that you get with this cat. Puppy has, well, that's an interesting one, but Puppy has some really charming kittens. So I would love to be able to add Puppy to the world in the future and see what kind of kittens would come from having his genes roaming around my neighborhoods. So Puppy, out you go. And then PB Kitty, I have no idea where you came from or where you're going, but you are clearly a cat of grand adventures. So I hope you have a wonderful time and I shall see you next time. But alright guys, it is also time to actually celebrate with Sarah. Don't worry, Sarah. Apparently, this is a mad scientist lab, so you can totally snag a youth potion on your way out. But for now, time has passed, you have gained even more experience, and you are an elder! So Sarah is now an elder, you guys, and you know what that means. We are going to need a new lab assistant next time. If you would like to become our lab assistant and have me kind of have to paw all over your face as we mix your genes, maybe creating a secret identity for you by doing that, uh, then leave a comment down in the comment section below because I really like to ask people before <laughs> turning them into lab assistants because it is a little bit, it is a little bit much if you ask me. But all right, so Sarah is older. She actually matches her outfit now, which is really cute. And we are going to make Nora, our fanged rabbit cat, her very own mate. And we're actually going to pick the very first of the cats, the random mixed breed cats that we create. So is this a mixed breed? Nope, this is an Asa cat. 
So the next cat is going to be Sarah's, or excuse me, Nora's mate. And boom. Wow, look at you. You are amazing just the way you are. Oh my gosh. And this is actually going to be Leah. So welcome Leah to the family tree. You are feline experiment 044. So we are finally starting to get there. Oh, we are so far behind the dogs with the cats, but thankfully we really have some wonderful custom content. So our cats have so much variety now. Speaking of variety, even though Leah looks amazing, she's talkative, she's a glutton, she's playful, we are gonna have to change everything about her. But let's take a peek at what her kittens would look like right now before we actually start changing everything. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is one of those moments where I just, I can't handle it. This is just, oh, oh, straight to the heart. Straight to the heart. Leah, who is this glorious cat? It grows up into such an interesting crea creature, but oh my gosh. Leah has beautiful kittens, noted. So this is what Leah and Nora's kittens would look like right now. If they ended up having a kitten, this is what it would look like. Really beautiful. I really love Leah's current look too. So I might actually, let's go ahead and save the family tree as experiment 54.5. That's what I normally do if we have a really cool animal come up in between having to change all of their genetics. And now we are actually going to have to change everything about this beautiful cat and we will see. I wanna glance at their kittens just one once more because I wanna make sure I know what they looked like. All right, so mostly it seems like they're taking after Leah. We're kind of plain. And they have Leah's fur texture, but there's some that look like Nora. So this would just be like a good solid toss up between the two of them, but especially Leah's fur color as it is, is kind of dominant. So now let's change everything about her and see how that would change. So we're going to randomize the body once. There we go. We're, let's do the tail now. We're actually gonna randomize the tail just once too. Curses! I was really hoping for three tail. I was like gonna do a dance if it was three tails. I'm going to roll the dice to see if we change the head shape. And we actually do change the head shape this time. We're gonna randomize it six times. This is interesting because we have a lot of feline head shapes that we have not seen for a long time because they just don't seem to show up in the mixed breeds. So one, like that shape. We haven't seen a smush face cat in forever. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, so kind of like a normal jaw, normal head shape, but we did give the opportunity for some very, very unique head shapes to show up. So I feel like that was fair. All right, we're gonna change the ears six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna change the nose twice. One, two. We're gonna change the whiskers 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay. We're gonna change the eyes 11 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Oh, ooh, look at that. That is a very intense gaze. Leah, you seem to be promising us uh, quite the change in appearance over the next few genes. So now that tail is done, head is done, body shape is done, it is time to change the fur shape five times, or the fur color and patterning five times. One, <gasps> that would be so cool if we could have a Frankenstein cat, but unfortunately I don't think we will. Two, three, four, five. Okay, a tabby cat. This is interesting, because Nora is also actually a tabby cat, but maybe it'll all come down to a matter of coloring. Uh, we're actually going to change the first color five again. One, two, three, four, five. Oh my gosh, are we good? Are we gonna end up with a curse of gray cats at this rate? 10 times on the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eight, oh, pink. Eight times on the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 11 times on the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Okay. This is interesting. We're going gray. Is that your influence, Sarah? Now that your hair is no longer pink, you can only channel gray into our cats, but that's kind of cool. Okay, let's see what else we're gonna end up with. Uh, we're gonna change the fur shape eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so we do have some fur on this cat and we are actually going to roll pet clothing 11 times, which means that we really are gonna run some risk of losing eyes or paws or maybe gaining some very, 
very unique looking ears. I'm always on the lookout for those rabbit ears because I think they're adorable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, no, eleven. Oh my gosh. No way. I can't believe this just happened. Okay. Well, you guys, I need to take off a few of these things, um, but we just lost our right foot again. So this is another cat who has lost its right leg. Talk about coincidences there. And we actually have small fangs. We actually do have small fangs on this cat, like really, really tiny fangs too. So it looks like we have another vampire cat. And that means that we are 100% going to have these small fangs on our cats. That's kind of amazing. So vampire cats it is, fanged bunnies and vampire cats. I'm sure this is not a mad scientist lab, okay? This is a legitimate place of, of scientific research. But all right, we're going to go ahead and we are going to randomize four times for their kitten by mixing together these two's genes. So let's see, Leah and Nora. Wow, and they would actually have, wow! This would turn out to be a really beautiful son. So this would be their son if they had one cat. We're gonna randomize three more times. Two. Oh, we're getting so many more colors in the grays. I shouldn't have said that about, about the jeans, Sarah. I'm sorry. Just because you're going gray doesn't mean all of our cats will. Three. And four. <laughs> we did go gray. Okay, so it looks like gray cats are going to completely start dominating our family tree. And I think Nora does have the bunny tail. So we're going to go ahead and roll to see if her child will inherit that. And yes, okay, so we're actually going to have the little bunny tail, which is pretty much the same as the bob tail, but slightly different. And we are actually 100% going to have these tiny fangs because that is what both of the parents have. So this was pretty unexpected. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, and let me see. I'm pretty sure, you know what? I, I think that this person has actually had a cat named after them before, but we're going to go ahead and go with Blue Moon. So Blue Moon, you, because the name actually really fits very well, especially because Nora's like mother was named Moon and kind of started this whole gray cat family tree thing. But you are going to be feline experiment zero. Let me make sure I've got my numbers right. Zero, four, Five. So we have gotten 45% of the way up there on our feline family tree, and now we have fangs. I would really love to keep these fangs. It seems like the fangs are becoming quite dominant. Uh, in, a, in a way, it'd be kind of fun if when you had the gene carry on for so long, you could make it more dominant, but that would be more compl like complicated than what my dice do. So let's go ahead and give the traits. This is going to be a clever, playful cat who is spoiled, which is really adorable. So Blue Moon has now inherited a spot here in our feline family tree. Uh, and we're gonna have to see what we end up with next time because we're getting some really dramatically different felines, but I haven't forgotten it has been a while since we have gone over to the dog side of things. So we'll probably experiment with some dogs next time and we are going to need a new lab assistant. So if you guys are interested in becoming the lab assistant, you know what to do. Just leave the comments down in the comments section below. And if you are interested in becoming one of our very mini felines that we have been adding in, then all you need to do is the same thing. Leave a nice little comment and we'll figure it out. Also, I kind of want to do a quick experiment. Hmm. If we had Leah and like a random unknown parent have a few- <gasps> Wow! Okay. You know that pink coloring actually comes out to make a very, very interesting set of cats. Very interesting indeed, especially when you start getting to cats that look like this. So that just, the moral of the story there is don't count all of your, uh, your cat genetics at one glance. Unlike in The Sims 3, oh, and I'm so sorry about that back leg, Leah, I have no idea what happened. But yeah, unlike in Sims 3, there are a lot of recessive genes just tied to the fur pattern that you might actually end up with. And you never know how that is going to change your family tree. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.